Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to Mayhem Country Living. And introducing my friend, the tomato hornworm. How about that? Okay guys, you can see that these can have a really, really big difference. These are not actually tomato hornworms. These are tobacco hornworms. Now, you can tell the difference from that red tail right there. That lets you know that it is a tobacco hornworm as well as the diagonal lines. Tomato hornworms, true tomato hornworms, have vertical lines and that little fake stinger on the back is black. And this is a juvenile. You can see the big difference in these guys. There we go. More to come. Now, we're back. These guys are the caterpillar stage of a moth that lays the eggs in early spring. Early spring, it lays the eggs. About a week later, these guys, very, very small, begin to develop. And then they will begin to climb to the top of the tomato plant. Now, not only do they attack and invade tomatoes, but they also do anything in the nightshade family. So, think peppers, potatoes, anything like that. Now, that brings the question, if these guys actually ingest plants from the nightshade family, are they toxic to critters? Well, they're not to chickens, I know that. Uh, someone told me that their bearded dragon ate these things all day long, so that leads me to think that. Now, tomatoes actually, although they are a member of the nightshade family, are not toxic. The leaves are not. I eat tomato leaves in salads routinely and have never had any problems, and you can research it because I could be crazy. More to come. Okay, guys, now we're back. Sorry about that. So these guys could be considered, I get toxic if an adult human tried to eat them, but why would you want to? Now, these guys, they climb in their lar in their in their very, very small caterpillar stage here, they climb to the top of a tomato plant and they begin eating. And then they get large enough, sometimes as large as five inches long. And then they will drop down into the grass and the ground and there, they will enter Sorry about that guys, they kept crawling all over the place. These guys, once they have gorged themselves enough, then they will drop down and enter a cocoon phase and That'll be the end of it. Now, what you see that one crawling on, I'm gonna move this forward a little bit here, is their poop. This is one of the telltale signs. You'll see this and this on your tomato plants. And you'll wonder, what the heck is that? Well, that is poop from the tobacco hornworm. If, again, the tail is black, it will be, there we go, 
it will be a tomato horn though. But I just thought it was very interesting. Um, what can you do? You can use pesticides. You gotta be careful um, because uh, there's a lot of residual with the pesticides. What else could you do? You could till. You could till deeply every season. I don't till in this garden that I have. So I could put out dimitaceous earth, which is really good, and that would help. Um, I could encourage wasps and uh, stinging insects because they love these things and they lay their eggs along the back of these things. Some of the parasitic wasps do. So, all kinds of different ways to control and mitigate this. The best way to do it, honest to goodness, although they are big and scary and creepy looking, the best way to do it is just to manually uh, remove these things. Now, I got to looking, and I w I've always been a person that asks why. Why do they start at the top and work their way down? Well, my thought is they come out of the ground very, very small, much smaller than this one, and they climb to the top, and they begin eating, and they get this big. And so my thought is just it is easier for them to go down being that big than it is to go up. It is just an ease of function. More to come. So, there you have it. It's kind of an overview of what they are, what they eat, anything in the nightshade family, what they can do, they can completely strip. I have found 27 on 50 of my tomato plants of those, uh, of pretty much that size, the, the large ones. Um, they can do a lot of damage to your tomatoes. And then they climb down into their cocoon, make their cocoon, go into the ground, cycle starts over. What can you do again? You can till. If you don't till, you can do some insecticides, you can do some dimitaceous earth, you can put in some natural predators. Ladybugs are also really good for eating uh, them while they're in the very small larval stage. Stuff like that. I thought it was really interesting. It's kind of a process. I have noticed that when these guys appear, my tomatoes are just about finished. So on a scale in nature, these guys might be considered a cleanup crew. So that's going to wrap it up. I hope you got some good insight again, uh, just, just how these things, although they're creepy looking, maybe they help out in the garden because they clear away the stuff that is no longer thriving. Take care of you people, guys.